Welcome to Civil Guru. These tutorials are made in different languages, like English, Hindi, Tamil, and now in Arabic also. Please choose your desired language from our playlist. We try to make these tutorials in a very simple manner, so that the fresh engineers and common people can understand easily. If you like this video, please subscribe now and share it with your friends. Thank you. Hello. I'm Ryan, on behalf of Civil Guru, a warm welcome to this episode. In the last episode, we have seen the basic principles of leveling, such as mean sea level, height of collimation and reduced level etc. In this episode, we will see about 1. The types of leveling instruments 2. Setting up of instrument 3. Change point, shifting of instrument 4. Rectification of errors in instrument by two points method 5. Measuring the distance by leveling instrument without measuring tape. These are very small techniques, however one should know about these. I suffered a lot in the beginning of my career because I don't know these techniques and no one was there to guide me. I don't want you people should suffer like me, so I want to explain about these chapters. Once we complete these chapters, it means we have learned all about leveling. So that, on next episode, we can go to quantity calculations of earth work for road project, by using reduced levels. Let us, go in detail. Now, let us see about the types of leveling instruments. In general, the leveling instruments are called as dumpy level. However there are two types of leveling instruments available in market. One is simple type of dumpy level, and another one is auto level. The simple type of dumpy level is, olden type of instrument. It has simple mechanism, it has an eyepiece, objective lens and a single focusing lens, inside the telescope. Which is fixed with the adjusting frame inside the telescope. A clear vision can be obtained by adjusting the focusing lens, with the help of focusing knob. In this type, the instrument shall be kept, 100% horizontally. Which is purely depending on the bubbles, in the level tube. In case a minor deviation in the bubble, it can change the collimation line from horizontal to inclination, which will give the wrong result than the actual. It is highly difficult to maintain the horizontality, so this type of instrument is not 100% reliable. The science and technology always helps the engineers to invent something new. Here the technology helped to invent a new type of leveling instrument, which is known as auto-level. In this auto level, inside the telescope, there are two fixed prisms, and one pendulum prism in between that two fixed prism. This pendulum prism assures to produce 100% reliable collimation line. Even when the level bubble is slightly out of range, and the instrument is inclined, the pendulum prism automatically adjusts the position and gives the collimation line in 100% horizontal. We can understand from the pictures given here. The final conclusion is, using the auto level is, most reliable than the dumpy level. Now, we will see how to set up the leveling instrument. Most of the engineers may know how to set up the leveling instrument. However, there could be some may not be knowing. For them, I will explain now in brief. Fix the tripod horizontally as much as possible. If required adjust the tripod legs, by using the adjusting screw, to bring the tripod top horizontally. Then, place the leveling instrument on top of that tripod, and tighten by the central fixing screw. Turn foot screws of tri-brack into center position. Center the circular level, by adjusting the foot screws. Here. Most of the fresh engineers get struck, and struggle for long time, to bring the circular bubble to the center. So, please listen carefully now. Keep the telescope, parallel to any two food screws, as shown on the picture and adjust both the foot screws, either inward direction or outward direction until the level bubble come at the center. And then keep the telescope perpendicular to that two foot screws and adjust the third foot screw up or down as required to bring the level bubble at the center of the circle. Repeat the same procedure one more time to make sure that the bubble is perfectly at center. Now adjust the eyepiece. Keep a white paper close to objective lens, and rotate the eyepiece left or right as required. Until we get a clear vision of cross hair. Now, the instrument is set horizontally and ready for surveying. Now, let us see what is change point. 
when it is necessary to do the leveling for a long distance like road projects, it become important and unavoidable to shift the instrument. Now, we will see how to shift the instrument to continue the leveling. In last episode, we have studied how to carry out the leveling. The back sights are taken on the known benchmark. And intermediate sights are taken to calculate the aisle value of any number of existing ground. And four sights are taken before shifting the instrument. Now, let us work for road project. We will use some change points to shift the instrument and convert that change point as temporary benchmarks for future references. Let us make a table and record the values and calculate the reduced levels. We will set up the instrument at pointer and take a backsight from the known benchmark. Here the benchmark value is 70 meters and the backsight value is 1.2 meters. Around 200 meters away from the benchmark, fix a steel peg at point 1 and take a foresight value of that steel peg. Here, the foresight value of that point 1 is 0.9 meters. As now, we are planning to shift the instrument, this steel peg is called as change point. Now, shift the instrument to the point B, take the backsight from the change point 1. Here, the BS value is 1.10 meter. And again, fix a new peg at point 2, and take a foresight for that peg, the foresight is 0.80 meter. And this is called as change point 2. Repeat this same procedure to fix the change point 3. The BS is 1.25 and the FS is 0.95 meters. These change points can be treated as temporary benchmark. Concrete around the peg and fixed it strongly to use it in future. Now, let us look into the table and calculate the aisle of each change point. The height of collimation at pointer is 70 plus 1.20 equals 71.20 meters. From this HC, deduct the foresight 0.90 meter, which gives 70.30 meters, which is the aisle value of change point 1. Now, the HC of the instrument at station B is the aisle of CP1, 70.3 meters and, add, the BS 1.1 meters equals 71.4 meters. And deduct the FS, 0.80, gives the value 70.6 meters, which is the aisle of CP2. Repeat for CP3. The HC of station C is, aisle of CP2, 70.6 meters and, add, BS of 1.25 meters equals 71.85 meters, and deduct the FS 0.95, gives the value 70.9 meters. Which is aisle of CP3. Now, we understand, how to shift the instrument, and fix the change point, and convert that as, temporary benchmarks. Now, let us see, how to check the errors, and eliminate that in the leveling instrument. Due to rough handling of instrument, there could be chances of defects inside the telescope. Means, defects in the focusing lens. Due to that, there could be error in the collimation line produced, and the actual aisle value may not able to obtain. So it is always better to check the instrument periodically. We will use, two points method to check. Choose a flat terrain around 60 meters. Set up the instrument at the center. Measure and fix two wooden peg exactly at the distance of 30 meter from the center of the instrument. One at the right hand side, pointer, and another one at left hand side, point B. Take the staff value 1.20 at pointer and 1.10 at point B, the difference is 0.10 meter. Now, shift the instrument close to pointer, and check the level difference between two points, if the instrument is in good condition, the difference between two points must be 0.10 meter. In case any defects in the instrument, the collimation line may be slightly upward, or downward. Due to that, the difference in staff reading, may be more, or less, than, 0.10 meter. In case there is error, and the difference is more than 2 millimeters, then we have to adjust the instrument. Screw off the protective cover on the eyepiece, turn the adjusting screw, until the horizontal hair gives the correct staff reading, the difference of 0.10 meter. And screw on the protective cover. Repeat the checking procedure one more time and make sure the instrument is perfect. Let us see how to measure the distance with leveling instrument, without measuring tape. 
before taking the measurements, we must know more about cross hairs in the telescope. In addition to the cross hairs, there is two more lines. That is called a stadia hair. Upper one is known as upper stadia and lower one is known as lower stadia. Now, set up the leveling instrument and fix the leveling staff where you want to measure the distance. Take the reading at upper stadia and then reading at lower stadia. The difference between these two stadia hair is the actual distance in meters between the instrument and staff. Let us see a sample. Here, the reading at upper stadia is 1.500 and the lower stadia reading is 1.345. The difference between these two point is 15.50 centimeters, means the distance of that leveling star from the instrument is 15.50 meters. This is called a stadia hair method, also it is known as tachymetric survey. Before closing this session, let us have look, today what we have learned. 1. The difference between dumpy level and auto level. 2. Procedure of setting up of instrument. 3. Shifting of instrument by using change point. 4. Rectification of errors in instrument by two points method. 5. Measuring the distance without measuring tape by tachymetric survey. In next episode, we will calculate the quantity of earth work for a road project. If you really enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and share to your friends so that they can also enjoy. Thank you.